Hello and welcome back to my little nuclear craft test world. You can see some strange things over there. 1.7 is finally out, but before we get to the new stuff in 1.7, um, I'm going to show off all the stuff that was added in all the 1.6 A, B, C, D, E versions um, just to get up to date and then we can go and check out what's going on over there. Um, there's some new stuff, obviously. Um, that's not everything. Of course, there's the particle accelerators as well. That's, those are the fusion reactors. Um, I've got a little setup of four of them over there. Um, but, but, but enough of that. Let's get back to, to this stuff and we can move on to the interesting stuff in the next video. Okay, so... I'm literally going to go through the change log, going go from 1.68 all the way up to 1.6e, and I'll skip out all the stuff that like sort of isn't really useful anymore. Okay, so first of all, there were some new manufacturing recipes, exciting. Um, other little recipe tweaks, um, some NEI info recipes. Uh, I think that means like the uh, the information tab, like when you press use, and it tells you tells you stuff in here. Um, comparators now read the fission reactor's heat level. Um, again, fission reactors have changed, so they've all been emptied out, but the uh, the uh, comparators will now read the fission reactor's heat level. In the latest version, I believe that it um, I believe that it uh, reads the heat level up to, I think, 100,000 off max, and then we'll just output a full signal. I think that's how it works. Um, up to um, that 90% mark, or 99% mark, whatever it is, um, it inputs a signal which is proportional uh, outputs a signal which is proportional to the uh, heat in the reactor. So if you want the reactor to stay around a certain heat, then you can keep it with the uh, with the comparator, just like the uh, fusion reactor. Um, what's next? Um, yes, yeah, the fusion reactor comparator setup keeps the efficiency around 95%. Um, that's been a change that's been around for a long time. For some reason, I put it in this change log uh, for this for this version. Um, the fusion reactor now produces more power, and there's a few tweaks to heat generation. Okay, interesting. Um, 1.6b. Okay, there's actually a few additions here, so we've got to go over here. The liquid helium extractor was added, which I believe is this machine here. Here we are. Um, this machine uh, turns your liquid helium he liquid helium four cells, which you get from uh, which you get from the helium liquefier. Um, it actually turns it into liquid helium. So you literally just put it in there. And there's one recipe. It gives you one bucket's worth of liquid helium, and uh, you can hook this up uh, with like a fluid cell. Make this an extract. You'll see that we'll get buckets worth. There it is. So there we go. Buckets worth of uh, of liquid helium. Now, liquid helium can be poured in the world with, like, buckets. I don't think buckets, no, not buckets, but you can use, uh, like, universal fluid cells for industrial craft or um, the tanks for mechanism stuff. And it basically flows in the world as this sort of, like, very quick-moving liquid. Um, so it flows up very far, um, and it's very, very deadly as well, because remember, this stuff is really cold. So if you step in this stuff, it's worse than lava. So highly recommend you don't stand anywhere near it. But it's a pretty good weapon, first of all. Uh, if you pour it down a hill, um, then you're going to basically decimate everything below the hill. Um, but be very careful when pouring around with it, as I say, because it does flow very, very far. And because it spreads across a flat surface 16 blocks, um, then if you've got any ledges anywhere in that vicinity and you've got like a hill or something, it will flow for absolutely miles. So just be careful um, about that. Anyway, that's uh, liquid helium. Uh, then we've got solar panels. Solar panels, literally, um, again, we can look at NEI info by pressing U on it. Um, generates a constant stream of 10 RF per tick during the day uh, by default. So you just literally plop it down, and there you go, 10 RF per tick. Simple. That's what the solar panel does. Um, particle accelerator, electrolytes, and supercools. We won't worry about that now. Um, I added magnesium uh, ore and magnesium diboride. So um, you can now get magnesium ore from the ground. You can turn that into magnesium ingots. Uh, you can also turn it into magnesium dust. And then you can mix the magnesium dust with crushed boron to get magnesium diboride, which gives you diboride ingots, and that's used to make some of the stuff. Where is it? Makes uh, makes this stuff, the magnesium diboride wiring, which is then used to make electromagnets. Uh, so there we go, that's that. Um, fixed a bug where plutonium was generating in the overworld. That was fixed here, yeah, that was a bit of a weird one. Uh, and also updated all the um, APIs, like the uh, NEI API and code chicken call and stuff like that. So, yeah, updated all them, and the Industrial Craft API. So they all updated because there were some weird crashes going on. 
And that was an attempt to fix some of the bugs going on with mechanism. I don't know if those have been resolved. Apparently there's some weird bugs going on with mechanism, which I haven't been able to find a solution to. Um, but we won't worry about that now. Um, so that was 1.6b. Uh, okay, 1.6c. Huge amounts of additional NEI info added to the mod. Okay, so that, again, that just means like when you press U on stuff, that tells you stuff, for example, like speed upgrades. Um, stacked upgrades increase the speed exponentially used to increase speed of machines. So basically, if you just type in nuclear craft, and you press like U on any of these things, like that, just tells you about it. Smelt size is very fast and uses simple So basically, it just tells you about everything in the game. So that's sort of like a, a sort of rough wiki um, until the actual proper wiki's done. Um, so there we go. It just tells you about stuff. It's quite useful. Quite useful if you didn't know about that already. Um, okay, what else? Fix crash release to liquid helium textures. Okay. Additional useful requested recipes and additions to the ore dictionary. Oh yeah, so, the, uh, so one of the things that was added was that you can now, in a crafting table, turn all of these like uh, gas cells, um, you can just turn them into empty cells by crafting. Because a lot of people, for example, end up with lots of oxygen that they don't, don't use, so you can just craft it back into empty cells if you want to. Um, what else have we got? Clean up configs into one neat file. Unfortunately, that, that got, I got rid of that again because I didn't like using one file, so sorry if you had to fiddle around with configs for ages because of a couple changes. Um, additional texture files, allowing more flexibility with texture packs. So yeah, now in the um, resources folder with all the textures in it, there's like different textures for like the top and bottom and side of machines because someone requested it and I thought, you know, why not? Um, it means that texture packs now, you can have like different you know, textures on all the different sides of the block. So, you know, adds a bit more flexibility if you want to make a texture pack. And I believe someone has made like a rough Sfax one. Like there's a, there is a Sfax incomplete texture pack. That's what I've seen so far. There might be a faithful one. I don't know. Um, you don't really need faithful anyway, because all these textures are 32 times, so whatever. And a large amount of organizing of the mod files, yeah, we won't worry about that. Um, I need to just quickly press F11 here, uh, because uh, unfortunately um, I need to scroll up on my change log. There we go. Let's go back. Um, okay, so 1.6D, added achievements. Yeah, I forgot about that. So achievements, um, there are now achievements for nuclear craft. Where are they? Here they are. So you, know, you can see up here, there's actually quite a lot of achievements. It just gives you, I don't know, it doesn't really give you a very good guide through the mod, but there's a few things there. So, you know, make a depleted uranium fax low, make a nuclear furnace, domino special, make a nuke, reaction generator. So there's a few that just sort of stand alone, but there's a few sort of like, you know, paths you can go, you know, if you want to. So there we go, there's some achievements. I just added them because I thought they were fun. Thermal expansion support, so now as you saw there, um, you saw there that uh, you can use uh, the liquid helium cells in the fluid transposer to get up liquid helium. So there's a lot of like thermal expansion uh, stuff going on that you can do. Um, what else? Speed and energy upgrades now increase the speed and energy efficiently of mach uh, Sorry, the speed and energy upgrades now increase the speed and energy efficiency of machines exponentially. Yeah. Okay. So um, before this update, um, there was just some weird system where um, depending on the number of speed upgrades or energy upgrades, it would like multiply or divide the amount of energy used by a certain amount. Now it's just an exponential system. So for every speed upgrade you put in, it uses uh, the uh, machine will use per operation 1.8 times the amount of power and per tick will also use up 1.8 times the amount of power squared. So um, the, sp the machine will run per speed upgrade 1.8 times the speed and also each operation will be 1.8 times the energy so per tick it's 1.8 squared times the numbers uh, times the number of speed upgrades so if you have eight speed upgrades in there then you're going to use 1.8 to the power 16 times the energy per tick if that makes sense and then the energy upgrade divides the amount of power per tick by 1.7 so if you put um, say uh, eight speed upgrades and eight energy upgrades then I believe that, I can't really work it out in my head, but the amount of energy you actually use per operation is going to be quite a bit higher than if you had no upgrades, but obviously the machine will run a lot quicker as well. So for example, if we just show it how fast that this isotope separator is without any um, upgrades in it, then it's sort of, it's quite slow. Uh, but if we put in some speed upgrades and some energy upgrades, then we'll see that um, this, I need, to, I need to make this texture work. That's one bug that still remains. Um, you'll see that it's a lot quicker. So it's exponential now. And if you put eight speed upgrades in there, let's get a few more speed upgrades. It's really, really quick. 
So let's put these all in here. And you'll see really fast. So yeah, the exponential sort of speed really, really boosts the speed of machines when you've got a lot of upgrades in there. Okay, what else? Um, fix crash bug related to liquid helium having zero viscosity. Fix that. We don't have to worry about that. Fix major crash when RTGs and solar panels were connected to extra utilities pipes. Okay, so yeah, um, there was a bug where sometimes when these were sat next to the extra utilities, like transport pipes, it would crash. I think that's fixed now. Um, let's test it right now. Let's see. Extra utilities. Let's get a transport pipe. Oh well, there's a lot of stuff. Oh, it's lagging a bit. Okay, let's just call it transport pipe. Transport pipe. No, what is it called? Is it just called pipe? Here it is. Transfer pipe. So yeah, now you can you can place these next to it now, and it doesn't crash. It just used to crash, so there we go. That's a fix. And a lot of people were saying that they were crashing because of that. Um, Let's have a look. Three music discs. Yeah, there's three music discs. Oh, these crap profile completely. Okay, three music discs. So uh, if you can see here, there are these music discs. Um, ten points to whoever, as I say, it says here, ten points to whoever knows which game the songs are from. Okay, so so what game are these songs from? Um, if you piece all the clues together in the titles, you might actually be able to work it out. But they're just some some nice little tunes you can play. I added them because. I felt like it. I just wanted to see how music discs work. So there we go. Those are those. Um, what else we got? Rice cake and fish and rice cake. Um, some people may know what that's a reference to. Um, others may not. So there we go. Fish and rice cake and rice cake. Good foods. Um, I don't know how much this heals because the info on this is a little bit nonsensical. But again, if you get the reference, then there you are. If you don't, well, type in fish and rice cake on Google. Um, fusion electromagnets. Currently have no use. Well, now, now they do, so we'll skip that. Reorganize configs again. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, recipe changes. A few recipe changes here and there. Minor changes to RF generation from continuous generators. I think that means like the solar panel and the RTGs like that just like continuously generate power. Um, minor changes to mob drops. Yeah, some mobs now drop different things. Um, but don't worry about that. Um, minor texture changes. Who cares? Synchrotron controllers can now determine whether it is connected to a complete accelerator ring or not. So that means, basically, that in that update, um, synchrotron, the controller for a synchrotron could then actually, like, actually you know, distinguish between a complete or an incomplete structure, basically. Um, so that's you know, that's that's quite good. Um, made an attempt to lower lag from certain blocks. Um, so yeah, that basically I think reduced the lag from some of the machines and also these generators created quite a lot of lag. And in the most recent update, 1.7b. Uh, or A, I think, um, the fission reactors, the fusion reactors, the electromagnets, synchrotron, all that stuff, hopefully the lag has been reduced on those as well. Because a lot of people, a couple of people were saying that um, for really big fission reactors, there was a lot of lag, I think because the block that was checking through every single part of the structure, but now it only does that once a second. But it's actually a config option, so you can, you can change how often it actually checks the structure. But I think by default it's once per second, so hopefully that cuts down on lag. Um, more restructuring of the mod. Oh, yeah, I moved around some stuff to make it more, you know, make more sense in the in the code. And um, possible other things I've forgotten. I always forget stuff, and I may have forgotten stuff now, but I don't think I have. Um, and finally, 1.6e, highly requested feature, new config option to disable the nuclear workspace. Okay, so yeah, the nuclear workspace is obviously the five by five crafting table. Here it is. But I've actually got um, a setting on at the moment. There's a config option. I think it's called the heavy duty workspace actually. So heavy duty workspace, the five by five crafting table. As you can see, I'm clicking. There's no recipes because there's a config option which I have turned on at the moment, which uh, disables all of those five by five recipes. The reason for that, well, first of all, it means that um, you can automate stuff. Uh, actually, that's pretty much the only reason. So you can automate stuff if you if you want to automate nuclear craft stuff. I highly recommend turning off the nuclear workspace. It may even end up being default off because you know it probably takes away more from the game than it adds. So I might just get rid of it altogether, or at least make the config option disabled by default. Um, so, for example, if I was to make a fusion reactor, uh, the recipe is now uh, in the three x three crafting table rather than the five x five. Um, it does make some things cheaper, and I have tried to make up for that uh, by making some of the rest, like the actual components of the recipe, more expensive. But overall, it will be cheaper. Um, so, you know, sorry about that. 
Um, but that's there's nothing I can really do about that, to be honest. Um, but it's still pretty expensive, some of the high-end stuff, especially the super electromagnets, which we'll get to in a later at a later date. Um, okay, what else have we got? Slight changes to du tool durabilities. So yeah, some of the durabilities on the tool changed, especially the spaxels, spaxelos, whatever they're called. They changed a little bit. Um, minor changes to GUI textures. Um, yeah, you may have noticed in here that they've got these, uh, they've actually got the pictures of the speed and energy upgrades instead of that S and E. I didn't really like the S and the E, so I decided, um, not in 1.6 E, but I think it was like 1.7, to just get rid of these S and E and change it with the actual textures of the upgrades, which I think is much better, actually. Um, prevented the liquid helium extractor from running if the internal tank is too full. Yeah, there's a bug where it would just keep running, even though even if this was full, that shouldn't happen anymore. Um, I think that's everything. So, thank you for listening. Um, as I said, we'll get to the new stuff, which is over here. Let's have a little sneak peek. Look at this. Some sound effects kicking in. God, the sound effects were a pain, but we'll get to we'll get to what this all is and the uh, particle accelerators at a later date, and we'll hopefully look at the new fission as well. You may have seen that there's a lot of new cooler blocks. Um, wow, there's a lot of new stuff. So we'll get into all that stuff uh, next time. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you then.